I mean, it's late today. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to The Last Drop. I am Chris. Uh, today is day six on Whiskey Week Live. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Let me just get the chat up. Uh, cool, yeah. Um, all, yeah, loads of people coming in. Um, yeah, should we get my guests in? Uh, first of all, please go and hit that um, thumbs up button. Greatly appreciated. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're new, please Hit the subscribe button as well if you're watching on the replay or anything like this. Uh, and yeah, let's get everyone in. There we go. Welcome everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all good, thanks very much. Right, to my left Hello. is Neil from the Whiskey Trials. Or Trials? Interesting. Trials. 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 Uh, you don't even know. Below Hello. me is Antonio <laughs> from Whiskey Quests, uh, all the way from uh, Illinois in the United Chicago, States of Illinois. America. Uh, and then down to my bottom left is Andrew from Prestige Liquids, who is in Australia in Sydney, of course. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Uh Another day, another chat. Uh, let's go through the chat. Just welcome everybody in there. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, we've got Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, Rolf from it uh, is here. Thanks very much for coming, Rolf. Glad you've swapped over from that other rubbish live stream that's happening. I, I don't know what's <coughs> happening there, but pretty sure. It's not going to be as good as this one. Uh, da, 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 Mark Slinger's in. Hi, you doing, Mark? Uh, good to see you in. Society Dwell is in. Hi, how you doing? Uh, Whiskey Pilgrim's in. How you doing, Freddy? Uh, ooh, Johnny Spirits People's in. Hi. Uh, Laid. La Wiffy. That's a great name. Laid La Wiffy. Uh, hi, how you doing? Welcome. Bourbon <laughs> Professor's in. How you doing, Bill? Uh, some guy called Whiskey Trials, he's in. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Cool. <laughs> That's where is at the moment by the looks of it. Oh, and the Whiskey Friend's in. How you doing, Alan? With me, Alan. With me, Alan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Man, with an accent like that, you'll get a you'll get a yeah, part yeah. in the next Braveheart Hello. movie. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Scottish accent. We job it. That's probably one thing you should be able to do next time you have him on a chat is just start yelling out freedom. <laughs> you will never take my whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> William Wallace. <laughs> Alan Wallace. Lovely. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to have uh, <laughs> a brief discussion on um, Scotch regions. And that's sort of the topic today. Uh, so that's going to be cool. Um, but first of all, I want to do a couple of sort of a little Q&A with um, Neil and Antonio. Because um, I don't know enough about them. Uh, and I don't know whether you know enough about them, but... Yeah, we're going to start with a, a little question, um, just of how you got into whiskey, basically. Um, who would like to go first? Go for it. I'll Neil. go first. All right. Um, so, actually, it was my girlfriend that got me into whiskey. I um, I remember the first whiskey I ever tried was um, something that my dad gave me, and I, I'm pretty sure it was either a Lafroy or a Lagavulin. And at that stage, you know, being maybe 16 or something and just trying to taste, I just thought, right, that's it. Whiskey is not for me. And I, I never tried it really until um, maybe I was in my 20s. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I met my girlfriend. She was into whiskey. So she 
was obviously drinking whiskey and I, I started tasting it. But it's um it's a it's a difficult kind of it can be a difficult drink to get into, I think. I, I definitely struggled. My it took me a while to really start to appreciate it. Um but yeah, I'm glad I did and I'm glad Sarah got me into it. It's uh it's been the start of a really good journey and I've I've met great people like yourself, so Thanks. it's uh, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, the- How much did that comment cost? What? You what? <laughs> How much did that comment cost? <laughs> <laughs> that, that one was for free, the next one will cost. <laughs> cool. Uh, how about yourself, Antonio? Well, for me, it all, I always drank whiskey, uh, you know, at bars, but it was always mm-hmm. taking shots, uh, never mm-hmm. really having that appreciation like, you know, Neil was saying, and it wasn't until two years ago where I had a bottle of Jack Daniels that was given to me for one of my birthdays. And, and it was just sitting there. I didn't have any Coca-Cola's in the fridge. I didn't feel like going to the store. So I said, I'm going to start drinking it neat. And like Neil said, you know, you struggle because it's all you taste is alcohol and, and that harshness. But once you start getting those notes, those few, even if it's just caramel or honey, something different other than the alcohol, and you know that for sure there's something else coming out of that spirit. Uh, it just changes your life, and 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 you just want to explore more. Oh, was that an applause for me? <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> Worst applause like ever. Australia, it's um, it's <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well. Cool so story, bro. Cool story. <laughs> uh, boy, just wanted to give you the clap. Uh. uh yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, good start. Lovely. Actually, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. Andrew, what the hell did you get into whiskey? I don't know. But saying that. Um, it's um, like everybody, I, I'll say when you're kind of starting off, I was more so into the like the the Johnny Black and JD and Coke whenever I would go out with friends or family, stuff like that. And, yeah, and then I think I just started to try um, both of those neat and started to realise that I I enjoyed them. And then I guess probably what really kicked it off was when I started drinking, um, when I was introduced to the Lefroig 10. And um, since that, uh, the last two years have just progressed from there. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been a pit head from the beginning pretty much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely more of the kind of sherry finishes. I think the one that, that, that really, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd already started the journey. Um, and I've had I've had quite a lot of nice whiskies like the Dalwini 15 and all the rest of it. But when um, one of my friends gave me a, a Glendronach 12, that was like a, a proper game changer for me. It was just, it took me on this journey of, I, I, I mean, I could close my eyes. I was in the fairground. I could smell the candy floss. And that was like a real kind of magical experience for me. And, um, you know, I think a, a lot of people have got that with whiskey. You know, that, that's that one kind of thing that was the real game changer and makes you want to try so many more. Oh, yeah. Epiphany whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, yeah, should we discuss this? How to discuss regions of Scotland? Scotch whiskey, really, I guess? Yeah. It's a bit of a weird a one. Weird, not, um, uh, let's, let's start off. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I agree with the split. But, split, yeah, it's a bit mm, weird, isn't it? Yeah, the way it's kind of split up, it, it kind of feels it's a bit like, weird. It's um, like but... Glengoyne, isn't it? And they're, they're slightly weird. They're right on the border of um, Lowland and Highland. Uh-huh. One side of the road is where all the warehouse is. That's Lowlands. But yeah, right. the distillery yeah, right, is okay. on the other side of the road, which is Highlands. That's a very peculiar setup. Yeah, that, that, that's one that always confused me as well. Like you said, you've got a lot of, um, like, Speyside um, distilleries that kind of classify themselves as Highland or Highland that classifies as Speyside. And, you know, it's, well, I think one thing you've got to re- you know, realise is that it, any 
style of whiskey can sort of come from nearly any region of Scotland almost. Um, you know, you, they're, they're not always going to be in that bracket of an ILA has always got to be smoky because you don't um, you, know, you don't need to get smoky ILA's. You can get unspeated stuff. Yeah, that's a good that's a good thing you brought up because people that don't know Scotch, all they think is everything's peated. Yeah. They think, oh, I don't like that peat, and it's not true. You know, until you you have you know like reviewers and you start watching stuff like that, that you realize that there's more to it than just peat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you, do you think well, there's like a flavor profile though that comes from the regions? You know, can you do you get a, a kind of a, a, a sense of where something's come from? Like if you're doing blind taste tests, because I kind of feel sometimes with the with the Isla malts, um, I, I can kind of taste that there is a yeah. uh, there is that kind of even if they're not smoked, you, you do kind of get that earthy kind of peatiness that comes through quite a lot because of the water. I think. Um, I don't know if anybody else kind of feels that they could pick out like a Speyside or a Highland or whatever, but maybe it's just with the uh, the Islas are a bit more. Yeah, I you know. think. I mean, if I think if you would, to be honest, I probably haven't had a, an unpeated Isla. Hello. Um, I mean, I couldn't really. Uh, so, uh, good one. one. So the the Bunahaven's a good unpeated. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, you get uh, the twelve year old. It's a good, un it's a good unpeated uh, island. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm completely lying. I have had <laughs> an unpeated island. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, with, um, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I wouldn't say because I'm so early on this journey. I would. I wouldn't be confident in in picking it out. Um, I'm not gonna. You know sit here and bullshit that you know I would be able to pick it out but I pro probably couldn't um, I'd be like nah that's not an ILA but it is no yeah I don't think my palate's refined enough to, to try and pick that out at the moment to be honest I think uh, probably the more uh, like you said uh, it's just developing your palate more than anything the more obviously the more that you have the better you'll be able to di distinguish certain things like I know for myself, like when it comes to a space side, I associate that more, like that more sweet, clean, um, that clean taste. It's like the Glen um, for example. Um, most of the, the highlands I've had, for example, Glen uh, those to me have generally been more fruitier in flavor, but then. Like going back to the whole Isla thing, you go for an Ardbeg, and that's that's distinctly the um, Isla. You, there's no way you're going to mix those up, mix this one up amongst those two. It stands out so much. Oh, it's a dead giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think if I, uh, I mean, looking at sort of the areas, I mean, Highlands and Lowlands, they're just massive areas of land you know they take up the most space but you probably correct me if i'm wrong but aren't there like the most distilleries in space side that's right greg would probably tell me as far as i know potentially yeah that, that, you could be yeah, right i think there's like mm. and that's not a massive area either um i mean it only takes up the corner what sort of inverness way isn't it oh. no it's it's kind of it's, the right, it's of it. right at the very uh, kind of north, yeah. So it's in between kind of Inverness and Aberdeen, yeah. kind of area. And then, yeah, you got like Islay, which is a small island. You've got the islands themselves, sort of the Orkney and stuff like that. Guy and and then yeah, you got Campbelltown. Obviously, that used to have the most, didn't it, or something? It was like a ridiculous amount of distilleries in Campbell. And then now there's only three yeah. like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe just three. I think um, the on Aaron, there's another one just about to start. I think the Lag Distillery is close to putting out some product. Yeah, yeah so I think um, was it Kil? I think Kilkerran um, is one, and 
Is it Glen Guile? Yeah, Glen Guile Yeah, that's right. Springbank and yeah. Glen Scotia. Indeed. Three yeah. Campbell Town. Yeah, they're, I, I, it's interesting <laughs> how the sort of they sort of come about, really. I mean, you'd, you'd think that there'd be like loads of distilleries in Highlands because it's such a big area, but there, there doesn't seem to be. I think it was back in because I mean, I'm 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 clutching at memory of a Sunday morning at a distillery in Clydeside <laughs> after the whiskey gathering thing, where it had a lot of. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it was because it was outside of Glasgow and Edinburgh that they stuck all the distilleries up north to get away from um, sort of the taxation or something. So they're all like secret distilleries and stuff, I think, I believe. Um, it was all sort of that's right. underhand cloak and dagger. Alan, stuff, so. that's why Alan is now just saying that the, there used to be 124 distilleries yeah. in Campbelltown. And 52 on Aaron. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, there used to be loads. Wow. <laughs> Mark Slingers, feel your pain. Yeah, no. Um, it's crazy. But yeah, yeah, now only down to three, but I think... I mean, Campbelltown's one of those ones where it seems to be churning out some very, very good product. Mm. Yeah, I've only recently got into uh, Campbelltown, um, but the, the Springback... 10 it was amazing so i went on uh, a, a facebook group and, and asked which one i should try next what's well, like the standout spring bank for everybody for the people that know kind of thing. and they all yeah they all said the 12 cast strength um which i've been kind of slowly getting through the last couple of weeks um but yeah it's it uh, good? it's good it's, it's it's kind of you know it, it doesn't take any prisoners that one so um you don't need uh, too many nips of it but yeah, I mean, I, I had the Kill uh, yeah. Karen 12, and that is absolutely a fantastic yeah, whiskey. And that's, yeah. Then Vin um, recommended that to me. Uh, yeah, get, get back, getting back to the, um, the, uh, the areas, um, I, I noticed something on, on this one. So the, the Glen Cadden 13, um, this is from a distillery in Brechin. And like, obviously I stay in Scotland, so Brechin to me isn't the Highlands. So I immediately thought, well, it's a lowland, right? But when I went on and checked, it says it's a Highland. But if you if, if you look at where it is on the map and you go over to like say Edredower, Edredower is pretty much on the same kind of uh, horizontal oh. line. So it's not, that, Brechin's not that much further yeah. north. Yet the Edredower of course is a, as class as a lowland. Yeah, because I think I'm, I've got a map over here. That's why I'm always there. What the regions are. Yeah, lowland sort of comes up a bit. Yeah. Past Edinburgh and to another river. Or this. Does Does anybody know who who made the, the map? Like who drew the lines and said, right, this is lowland, this is highland? Nope. Diageo? Diageo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I think it, it was. I think it was something that was originally started as like a marketing um, thing, wasn't it? That, that just kind of um, that kind of just stuck around. I, mean, I, I think that's something that I heard a little while ago. Whether it's true or not, I'm not too sure. But um, like like we were saying before, I mean, with a lot of whiskies, it does get so hard to be able to, I guess, distinguish a region, but you try to um, create flavor, um, flavor profiles by segregating each one. So, yeah. That's a really nice color on that bottle. No, that's, why, that's why I was putting it up to the, the, the yeah. camera. It looks like white wine, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming there's no coloring added to it. Just no no coloring, color. no coloring, yeah. non-chill filtered, 46%, Glen Cadden 13. <clears throat> I'm just a way to open it. I've uh, not tried this one. I've tried the 10, which was excellent. Looks like something I emptied in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't taste like it, though. It's just surprising. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
<laughs> feel a bit salty though. That's <laughs> that naturally filtered, yeah. yeah? <laughs> naturally filtered. It comes yeah. from the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weed ram. Weed, yeah, weed. <laughs> And we've descended into potty talk already. Ah, <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the lines of, of the areas are quite funny, aren't they? Highlands is just a massive area. You know, maybe there's just no distilleries there. Like, ah, just highlands, that'll do. And then Speyside, yeah, that's where everybody is. Speyside. Lowlands, yeah, that's down south. Like, yeah, count. Or be English, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, Campbelltown Island, so, so it's, the islands. So it's just the 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 high and the lowlands that can. Um, it, it's up to them to decide if they want to be one or the other. Pretty much, from what I'm understanding. All right, possibly. Huh. Could be day. Yeah, it could be a good shout. I don't know. Really don't know. But I mean, like, um, they all, yeah, but they all do different, um, I think that's what we've got, you've got to say most, isn't it, that, um, they all can do sort of any style they want, really, depending on what, what they, what they fancy, it's up to them, isn't it? Yeah. That, the styles, while they're, they're quite key, um, each area, they don't have to follow those rules all the time, which is always nice. Otherwise, I think it get boring, wouldn't it? You like churning out the same liquid every day. Yeah, but I mean, just to um, the rules aren't as focused or like as tightly packed. I mean, can like compared to bourbon. I mean, Antonio would. You know, Antonio will vouch for the rules for bourbon is it's got to be minimum fifty one percent corn, uh, and then it's got to be bottled for uh, barreled for two years, got to be new oak, um, and all that. You know, there's so many more rules it seems for bourbon, which makes it a very oh, yeah. sort of sometimes maybe difficult to create something more varied um, and get a different flavour profile going. Um, compared to Scotch, where it seems to be a m bit more broad. Sense. Well, it's just because of the corn that has to be at least, like you said, 51% corn in the mash bill. But then they get to play around with different grains and different percentages to, you know, create something a little bit more unique. And, uh, yeah, a lot of bourbons taste the same way, but it's, uh, you know, like the four roses that I just reviewed uh, today, that... That has the typical bourbon flavors, but I mean, non chill filtered, which is one of each thing, really packs a punch of flavor and, and the, the mouthfeel on that too. So, so yeah, it's just the different ways to playing with with uh, with the uh, barrels too. You know, like finishing it. So there's no rule against finishing it. A bourbon is still a bourbon; it's just finished. Well, we we all know it's about the wood. That's the main ingredient. <laughs> Watch my other streams. My rant about wood. <laughs> there is there is restrictions though, isn't there, in in Scotch on on what wood yeah, can be yeah. used. So like obviously, I think it's got to be oak, but there there's um I think there is restrictions in terms of what what casks can be used. Um, I think it was uh, Glenn Murray they put out a, a cider mm. cask finish, and I kind of heard that maybe they got into a little bit of trouble about it because they didn't put it through the Scotch. Whiskey Association or something to say our cider casks okay to use. So um. I think that's probably what's kicked off because they're okay. just changing the rules, aren't they? Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're opening up two cider casks and a few other casks. Um, Tequila casks, I think, yeah. was one of them, right? That was it. Yeah. What do we think? Is that is that a good thing? pushing that, I guess. I'm thinking is. Diageo with like Don Julio and stuff but like yeah, that. Yeah, it does seem to be a bit pushed by Diageo, doesn't it? Some of it. Considering they have like <laughs> yeah. loads of I, I, I don't mind. Let them experiment, you know, make make new things. Yeah. 
I think they were pretty much saying it as well that the, the general rule was that it just pretty much had to be aged in oak, wasn't it? So I guess if those, um, say whether it's, a, whether, whether it's a cider barrel or whatever, I guess as long as it's been, it's an oak barrel, then big deal. Try it. Let's, um, let's see what we can get. Yeah, let's, let's get experimenting. Spice of life, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think the traditionalists might... Um, might disagree though. You can but. make you can make the traditional <laughs> stuff. There's no there's no rule that they're well, right, we're not gonna make you know, we're not gonna make Lafroy ten anymore because we don't want to do that. We wanna put stuff in tequila casts now. Um they're yeah. gonna do that still. Oh, they're that. gonna do something people else. That are, people that are Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> I just said like Viva la Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, that's it. They're not. No, that, I mean, I don't it's see it, why yeah, like traditionists should have uh, that too much of an issue. I mean, it's going to be like I say, they're going to they're going to produce the same stuff still. They're just going to try different stuff as well. They might find something better or something they might yeah. like even better. Yeah. It, it might be hard to get them to try it, but you know, maybe give it to somebody that that you know that it's strictly oh, you know, scotch should be just like this. Yeah. Give them. Once something like that comes out, just give them in a blind. What do you think of this? And they're like, oh, that's really good. What is that? Well, you know, it's finished in tequila cast yeah. or something like that. I mean, and then that's going to blow their mind. Like, no way. But yeah. It's also thinking about it now, isn't it? How, but, um, it's going to be in going to be two, three, four years down the line because you're not going to taste it now. I mean, they might open it up like next year. Like, you can use these casks now, but they're going to get the casks yeah. in. Uh, and then it's going to be probably finished. I mean, imagine most of them be like finished in like a year or nine months, something like that. And then some of the stuff they might leave in there for uh, ten years. I mean, you're not going to see the yeah. benefits of the stuff straight away. Um, but it, it's going to be an interesting period of years, isn't it? Do right now. Or, or they might have already started experimenting behind the scenes and maybe behind the curtains. Yeah. You know, I don't know. We'll see. Only time I was just thinking, how about this for um, controversy? For controversy, could you imagine if they had somehow managed to do um, Coca Cola aged in um, oak barrels, and then you used those barrels to age the whiskey? <laughs> yeah, no. Right, you've you've taken it too far now, Andrew. That's yeah. it. Far too far too controversial. It's premix. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Should we go back to the? Uh... I still want my whiskey to be natural, so. Yeah, I think that's what everybody's sort of trying to go down now, aren't they? So. Uh, I'm gonna start writing some stuff down. Um, we're gonna have a giveaway later. I'm gonna check out who's in the chat. Go from there. There's a lot of a lot of chat going on. So we got Greg. Uh, I think. Uh, oh, sorry, the guy earlier. Um, what's his name? I was going to say while you're doing that, Chris, I was going to ask Antonio. Like, when obviously, um, Scotland has its regions, but do you? I say, do you know at the moment how they're going with developing the whole like bourbon regions in the in the US? Because there has been some talk about that recently, where they're trying to distinguish. Uh, specific whiskey regions in the US now, aren't they? I mean, just by looking at the label, you'll see things like, oh, this was made in New York, this was made in Illinois. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's, you know, Midwest bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, but I don't think people look at that like, you know, like Scotch, where everybody knows that there's a certain part of Scotland where that uh, Scotch can be made, but um, for bourbon, it's just different states because bourbon can be made anywhere in the u.s yeah you know, there's no it doesn't have to be just kentucky i think uh jay from bourbon and the baby mentioned that last on the last streams cool. it, does kind of, it does kind of feel like it might be a bit of a marketing thing you know having having regions i wonder why it was even necessary for scotland to split it into regions and say this is a highland this is a lowland what's the point yeah yeah, 
Yeah, pers- I, I think I would probably um, prefer, I guess, not to have, I'll say, that region classification. Like I said, it. Uh, so I think it does kind of force people in a way to kind of neglect other whiskies because if you're if you usually don't say for example you don't like a base side typically well then you're obviously going to steer away from that region but obviously there will be some fantastic whiskies coming from that area i mean i mean if you like your peated whiskey for example i mean balveni does their um their peak week every year so you know that they're they're capable of doing a peated whiskey but they're from a um, they're a space side distillery, but they're capable of bringing out that type of um, that type of whiskey. So, I guess, yeah, I, I, it just gets so hard to classify um, things from time to time. Yeah, it kind of feels like um, by by you know having these regions, it kind of pigeonholes um, the, the the distilleries a little bit. So, for instance, if you started a a, a new distillery on on Isla, you would kind of feel almost forced, like or expected, to make something peated. Um, yeah. And you know, sherried if you were up in Speyside. You know, it seems to be that kind of theme. It's like, okay, what kind of whiskey you're going to make? It's, it kind of means that nobody can really do anything original because there's this expectation on them because of the region. Yeah. I say, um, uh, Neil, you do live in Scotland, don't you? Sure do. So. As somebody that lives in Scotland, like, do you find that like the Scottish um, like whiskey community generally? Do, do you guys focus on regions much at all, or say for you guys it is just all Scotch? Like, say like Antonio was saying, like for American whiskey, it's like you don't really classify it as this or that. It's just American whiskey. No, I think I think there definitely is. Uh, uh, there is talk about the regions. You know, people. Um, you know, are quite quite into that. You know, like um, it's, it's it's actually normally a kind of thing as well. So, like, if somebody asks what kind of whiskey you're into, that's normally the response is like space sides. Space sides are my favourite kind of thing. Um, so it, it it's definitely it's definitely a thing. Yeah. I see what Andrew was saying. Yeah, yeah. There's, but there's still not regions for bourbon. It's. I mean, you guys all know about Texas, how it's so hot and you can age things a lot quicker. And it does give it a, a different flavor profile because of that, you know, like really, really heavy char on the taste from the ones I've tried. So, so yeah, I guess there's a difference, you know, also where, where uh, it's produced. Um, Greg actually mentioned about MGP where, you know, it's Indiana. A lot of people source from, from MGP. And, uh, you know, at that point, how do you know? You know that it's a Midwest kind of thing when yeah. it's sold like you know oh made in California, but they never disclosed it on the yeah. label, and that's what people get mad about is is that. And then um, I don't know, it just opens a lot of angry doors. <laughs> <laughs> Not disclosing that stuff. What's the um, one that they um, put on a boat and it just goes around the world on a ship for like a year? The Jefferson Ocean something. Yeah, you ever had that? I haven't had that. I mean, they're all gimmicky, but I love gimmicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're American. That's, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I say, uh, An- Antonio was first in line to buy a bottle of White Walker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no. See? I was so anxious to get that one, and then when the reviews popped up, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to spend my $30 on, <laughs> on that. <laughs> But I did go pick up that Metallica black and bottle. Yeah, I think it's all right. Crazy looking for that. Yeah, it's good. It's really good stuff. So, and like again, it could be a gimmick. It couldn't. But I, I, many other breweries have been uh, doing stuff like that, like blasting music into it. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, that's a yeah, that's a gimmick. But I think um the guy from I can't remember who it was from Metallica, but he actually went to the distillery, didn't he? And selected the barrels with the distiller and actually got quite involved in putting it together. Yeah, yeah, they will, you know, put their stuff in there. But uh, Dave Pickerel, the late master distiller, he was the one that I think it's just the blending thing, you know. So, I, I, what was it? A uh, black, 
brandy casks or something. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, that's pretty much what gives it the flavor and mingling it the right way, you know. Quite a few bands that have done sort of drinks, isn't there? I would like to oh, put yeah. their names. Yeah, they're all getting on that. Scorpions, have they done Scorpions something rather? I think. Yeah, I don't yeah with my like, yeah. I know Slipknot just came out with oh, one. They? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor got that one. I'll, we'll be reviewing that soon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I know um, a, few, a few years ago ACDC released a range of wine, but apparently they, I don't think they went too good. <laughs> uh, and uh, Ramstein have done rum. Well, that. And the Pogues have obviously done an Irish whiskey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I was going to say, did they actually call it Rumstein or? I think it's called Ramstein Rum. Which is what? Uh, they, uh, what? They missed they a missed, trick on. They that. missed a trick there. Rumstein. Yeah, but again, it's probably right. Yeah, it's probably all right. I can't imagine it's like the best, but. Uh, we got who we got in. We got oh, Paul Gibbs has just turned up. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Always good to see Bearded Whiskey from uh, Twitter. You're ever on there. Oh, there we go. Greg's got uh, Scorpions, Motorhead, In Flames, The Pogues, and a few. Oh, Named all so, of them. Oh. Here's a question for you guys. If, if you could start a, a distillery in a region of Scotland, which region would it be and why? Ooh. I'm just going to say Isla right away. Yeah, <laughs> Isla. Yeah. I, I, uh, it's the Pete heads. I don't know. I'd, I'd be. Yeah. Uh, I'd be um, I don't know. The scenery you've been posting uh, on on YouTube, Neil. I'd I'd be around where you are. It looks beautiful. Yeah, I'd be the same. I'd be Campbelltown. I think specifically, I'd, I'd start something on Aaron. Um, yeah. That's the that's the goal. Wherever that's the dream. It looks the prettiest. <laughs> And has reasonable access Isla, there's to an nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with uh, uh, salty, smoking hot mermaids. Smoky hot marmite. <laughs> marmite. So this, so you can just imagine the the late the if Antonio was to design a, a label for his whiskey, it will be him with one of those mermaid um, suit things on a rock like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy that. We'd all buy that. <laughs> Definitely would all buy that. I, I will not wear the seashells. Yeah, yeah you got to wear the seashells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What about you, what about you Chris? Sorry? What about you? Where would you uh, open one up? Oh, where Neil lives. Because the, the, the scenery that he oh, um, well, that's yeah, right. is, he, is absolutely yeah. beautiful. So, yeah, Falkirk, isn't it? I mean, that no, was I'm not. your last video, Neil? Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, Whiskey oh. Wims. He's Volker. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Fife. I'm the sort of top end of Fife, so I'm just on the River Tay. Right. Yeah, I think that would be... Where, where was that, uh, Neil, where, where you recorded that last uh, vlog kind of video that you did? Yeah, that was on Tensmere Beach in St. Michael, so that's just along the road from me. It's about 30 minutes along the road. I'm, I'm enjoying those videos. Those are pretty cool videos. Yeah, I kind of stuffed up the sound on that one a little bit, but um, yeah. A apart from that, it's just a, it's just a different style. It's just something different. I was getting bored of doing the the sort of studio ones, just sitting doing the same yeah. editing process, the same yeah. thing, and I just wanted to do something a little bit different to mix it up and and, and mm -hmm. push push. I actually enjoy the editing. I've never done it before, so I'm I'm starting to get it's into it. Weird. Um, so every, I wanted every, to well, every learn YouTuber more stuff. I speak to, like yeah, editing's like. The bomb, you know. I love <laughs> like uh, uh, Anthony loves it, doesn't he? Uh, from New Drown Drinker, absolutely loves it. He's loving all those, you know, gifts and stuff that he's doing. But yeah, ev okay, everybody, yeah. Knows. And, you know, cool. I, get, I get a little buzz out of it. It's quite nice to edit and then I, see. I, I, it. I don't, I don't really enjoy doing the kind of review ones in the studio, just me sitting, because there's only so much you can do. But yeah. the, the ones where I'm like out walking about and stuff. I can I can kind of get I can be a little bit more arty farty with it. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, plug my own videos, but yeah, whiskey affair that was good. Um, and then yeah, the cognac show, all, all my out and about ones. I yeah, they're the ones that you really 
really enjoy. The the ones I mean I enjoy doing the whiskey reviews, but there's so little editing maybe in them now because sort of yeah. doing them in one hit. There's maybe a few ums cut out, but I mean that's about it really. And there's there's less you can do with them yeah. as well because you don't get as much B-roll. So when you're out and about, yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you you see other stuff that you want to video. You know, like I was videoing the waves and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Was, you know, so yeah, really. Gets, what camera do you use for? I have a Sony A6400. Okay. So, yeah, it was like marketed to be like the the sort of number one uh, or the the big vlogging camera, but it doesn't have. Inbuilt stabilization. That's all lens, is it? I have an iPhone. So it's all. It's all. No, there's no, nothing on the lens. It's all gimbal. Oh, okay. No stabilization at all. I said I have an iPhone eight. iPhone eight. Yeah, I mean, I, I know <laughs> yeah, lots of people yeah, have got that. Yeah, iPhone. I mean, Toby uses his phone. Um, somebody else uses their phone a lot. Yeah, Andrew, obviously. Me. Um, <laughs> the Samsung. Yeah, even I was saying that. Yeah, I think um, camera, 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 think, uh, yeah, Anthony uses their phone. I think. Yeah, one one of my videos was on I my mean, phone because I forgot the SD card for yeah, my camera. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I'll just use my phone. It's good, isn't it? I mean, it's not no reason why you can't use it. I mean, they're good good cameras. I mean, they're putting their money in Apple and Samsung. Yeah. yeah. The brands are available. YouTube. I don't want to get done for advertising mm. stuff, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Message. Cool. Let's let's. It's time for the quiz. You quiz, quiz me. Love that noise. It's the air horn. Right. Uh, if you have been watching or haven't been watching, Andrew, it's not C. Okay. <laughs> there is no C. No C answer. It's always uh, We'll go for Antonio and... I don't know what question set you've been doing, Andrew. Oh, yeah, you've done them both, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I've pretty much yeah, done them all. We won't bother <laughs> asking Andrew then. Sure. He keeps saying C. Boxy. YouTube actually just told me that I've been sending too many messages. Take a break. <laughs> 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 uh, there we go. Um, Talk about, about censorship. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, quick fire questions. Five. Uh, these are going to go out to Antonio and Neil. Uh, we'll go Antonio first and then Neil second. Uh, Antonio, your favorite current whiskey? My favorite current whiskey is the Four Roses. Small batch select that I just reviewed. That really blew my mind. Wait. Uh, your go to distillery? I haven't been to a go uh, distillery, but if I were to visit one, my top one would be Art Bag. Cool, cool. Your favorite video you've done? My favorite video. <clears throat> I would have to say it's the uh, Jim Beam Devil's Cut video that I made. I had a lot of fun working on that one. If you guys want to check it out, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody go and check out the Devil's Cut video of Antonio. Uh, your favorite non whiskey spirit? I don't have a non whiskey spirit. Huh? No, not favorite, but if I were to choose, um, man, you, you, that's a tough one. <laughs> not like a... I'll, I'll go with a, with a, with like an Añejo tequila. You know, I've been recently trying a few more, trying to get back into the tequila thing. And that is a hobby just to try something yeah, different. Cool, cool. And the final one, pineapple on pizza. No. No. <laughs> No. You posted that picture of no. pineapple pizza. <laughs> that was my kids ordered that at the ah, restaurant. Well, your kids like, are cool. And you're cool. Like, like kids. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, I... they, didn't, they didn't even finish it. It went in the garbage. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. Uh, Neil, favorite whiskey at the yeah. moment? 
Um, I think probably the uh, Springbank 12 cast strength, but my one that's always my favourite is the Glendronach 18. Yeah, this is all controversial on this channel, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, what's your uh, best distillery tour you've been on? Uh, it was definitely the Glendronach one. That I, I'm going to release a video fairly soon, probably in the next couple of weeks. I got a load of great footage. Um, it was a really relaxed uh, tour because we were with a bunch of guys who everybody knew kind of about whiskey. So, you know, it, it wasn't like the usual one where they're just, just trying to get the information out. It was much more a sort of Q&A kind of style. And uh, because they didn't have the visitor center um, done, we got to go up to the, the big house, which is, I guess, for normally for like VIPs. So we, we had the whole kind of historic room with the big table and all the paintings on the walls and everything. It was it was really good. So yeah, Glendronach. Cool, cool. Uh, your favorite whiskey tube channel? Um, my favorite whiskey tube channel? Do you know what? <laughs> it, 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 I'm going to be really brutally honest and it, it started off as being the whiskey vault. And then now I've just, because there was a couple of videos that they did that were really fun and made me laugh. Um, Bribe stuff. And yeah, and then I kind of I, I, I didn't really watch them that much. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I. I do try and catch a lot of you guys. Um, I, I, I liked Andrew's um, uh, Steve Irwin yeah. video. Uh, anything that anything that kind of makes me laugh. Um, and Antonio, is was the, where's the Pete? You know that. Uh, you know that's that the, the kind of stuff that makes me laugh is is good. Oh, that that was a very <laughs> diplomatic answer. <laughs> uh, I was going to say mine. I already know the answer to this question, so I'm going to go to the other one. What's your favourite non-whiskey? Uh, uh, so a non-spirit, a yeah, uh, uh, non-whiskey spirit, uh, rum, rum probably. Yeah, I like I like my rum, especially if it's like aged. Um, I think like the last one I had was the Appleton Twelve Year Old or something. Okay. That's, that was, uh, that was yeah, yeah. I think nice. so. Yeah, I'm. Re I'm really starting to get into my rums, as everyone. I think it's like the next big thing, isn't it? Because is, yeah. gin has. Ex I think. I think everybody should be investing their money in rum right now because whiskey's exploded, gin's exploded. Yeah. I think rum's going to be the next I one. I could. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to the rum fest. In October. That's cool. Where's that? Rum fest Where in is London. It? Mm. They usually are, but yeah, that should be cool. I ain't never been to London. <laughs> I ain't got no plans to go yeah. either. Daddy Savin is. Yeah, no, I'm a country boy, so uh, big cities freak me out. <laughs> the the uh, yeah, big cities are quite crazy. I mean, I've, I've been to a few big ones. I've been to Chicago. What's Chicago like, Anton? Chicago is very peaceful. <laughs> just recently he sent us a picture of a burnt out car in a in a car park. <laughs> I, like, I like how you just say it's very peaceful and just start laughing like it was a blatant lie. Yeah. I mean honestly it's <laughs> like anywhere <laughs> anywhere you go in, in, in the world there's gonna be your rough and places and you know places you shouldn't be there past a certain hour, but I mean I love it. I mean I wouldn't I don't think I could live anywhere else besides Chicago. I don't see myself living anywhere else uh, except Australia. That's one place I would I wouldn't mind to move over. But think about this. Then, but then I found out that the whiskey costs so much that just you know I changed yeah. my mind. I'm staying in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> and and we've also had this little thing of people recently stabbing each other in the middle of the city streets as well. So yeah, see, yeah. yeah. You guys have gun violence, we have knife violence. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not a knife. This <laughs> Great big spiders. Deadly spiders. Yeah. yeah, I'd be more afraid of the spiders than the knives. It's not a knife. Oh, uh, mate. We've, we've got pretty much every animal that can kill you over here. It's ridiculous. I remember a, a little while ago, I had gone to this... Um, so there's, so actually, it's not that far from me. There's like this, um, like, uh, like a zoo kind of thing that's just for like Australian native animals. 
And in the snake, um, ex in the snake exhibit, they had this list of like the the top twenty five most venomous snakes in the world, and pretty much the the top fifteen were all Australian snakes, with the exception of um, the cobra and I think it was the the diamondback um, rattlesnake. But the, but the majority of the list were all Australian snakes. So we've got the snakes, we've got the spiders, and it's not the big ones you need to watch out for. It's the little tiny ones that will kill you faster. <laughs> the red, red bats, really? you can the just oceans. go in your garden and find one, can't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Uh, the the red bat for us, I guess, is somewhat similar to the um, the American black widow. Okay. Uh, yeah, but the ocean that will, that will kill you as well. Crocodiles, sharks, jellyfish. <laughs> you're you're not safe. You're not safe anywhere. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, stingray to the chest, mate. That will do it. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, what's up behind you? <laughs> golden orb. The golden orb spider. That's it. Like, that's a drop bear. Drop bear? Is that what they are? The golden orb. Australian joke, you won't get it. Ah. That's, that's the one thing that we tell the... Uh, that's like one of the inside jokes that we tell the tourists over here. Um, we'll say that it's like you've got to be careful of drop bears if you go out camping or something. And um, it's pretty much what we'll call like a, a koala bear that will just fall out of the tree for no reason. But it's it's all, it's all a load of... <laughs> yeah, it's like Scotland and haggis. We always say that you've got to go out and catch your own haggis, or you know, you've got to be quick. They've only got three legs. Blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, guess who we got in? My name is Ian Pierre. My name is Ian Pierre. Oh, the influencer. The influencer himself, <laughs> Vin Pierre. Mr. Mr. Vin. <laughs> Welcome, Vin. How are you doing? Uh, Ebheads um, asked a question. Let me find it. Yeah, do you have to kill the spiders in your neighbourhood, Andrew? Uh, you don't have to. That depends on what side of the animal activist um, thing you're on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There's a, you just see the subscriber count on Andrew's channel just going down. <laughs> yeah. Spider killer. Gen look, ge generally speaking, like any other animal, you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Uh, with the exception of some, like for example, the like the funnel web spider, those can get quite aggressive. Um, they are known to be one of our most venomous spiders and they will bite through a leather shoe. Wow. <laughs> so you need to be careful of those. You're not uh, saying Really not. But but are those spiders like in the city or just when you go out in the wild? Oh no, they're everywhere. Oh really? Uh, like especially say for example, say something like a redback, they like to hide under like under little like window sills and things like that. So yeah, they'll be they're anywhere. Like one of the kangaroos run streaks and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Isn't like one of the biggest killers, like the huntsman spider, even though it's not particularly venomous, but it hides in like your car, in your window, on your sun visor, and then loads of people like pull this sun visor down, this massive spider drops down, and then they crash and die. That's like one of the biggest well, killers. That, that would be by car crash, not spider. Well, that's still, they're, they're causing the crash, but you know, that's what the, right, the root um, cause is. If you were to do like a root cause analysis on it, the huntsman spider in the sun visor would be the beginning of it. The funny thing with the, the I remember I had a little one in the car once. I I noticed that just as I sat in the car, it was sitting on the near the door on like near the door handle. And I I love spiders. I respect them. I love to watch them. But you put them anywhere near me, and I, I'm like a little girl. I'm I'm running off. <laughs> Man, honestly, I'm and, starting to sweat. Even just like talking about huntsman, I'm I'm actually starting and, to sweat. I took. Uh, <laughs> There was like a baby. There was a baby one in the car, and by baby I mean it was probably about that big. <laughs> um, I managed. I managed to kill it, and um, I I drove off and did what I had to do for the day. That night, when I went to go to bed, I went to close my the blinds in my bedroom window, and on the fence just outside the window was one that was about that big. <laughs> oh, me one. It came. It, yeah. Revenge. <laughs> 
Quickly put the blinds down, close the window, go to bed. <laughs> wow, that's insane. Yeah. Never mind. Not moving to Australia. Hmm. <laughs> I'll take my chances there's, with the uh, gangs of Chicago. Well, there's. I don't know if you've got if you guys have watched um, Modern Family at all, but there was an episode of that where like all the family went to visit Australia because Phil had some like ties to Australia and everything was just going against him while he was there. And he came across this Australian guy and he goes, mate, he goes, you know, you're an Aussie because Australia is harsh to its, to the people that live here, but they, it loves its tourists. So you'll be safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well taken care of. Well, yeah. you know, this is what happens, isn't it? We go completely off topic. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I was, I was, I was about to even go further off topic, but I'm not, I'm not going to. Um, I was going to start getting into the evolution of uh, spiders and the the, uh, the venom that they've got because I just don't understand it. But I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, venom was a good movie. <laughs> yeah. That's debatable. Ah, uh, cool. But this is a good whiskey. I've got to say, guys, the Glen Cadam Thirteen. It's really nice. There's, um, there's, I'm getting a lot of kind of banana and pineapple kind of notes so it's got a kind of real kind of tropical nose on it cool i know um what region what region yeah where where is it's it's, it's 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 in brechen but it's classed as highland but if you live in scotland you wouldn't you wouldn't class brechen as the highlands see there's that thing again yeah because i mean the highlands comes uh, down to glasgow and edinburgh basically Anything above that is highly. Really? What have you got? I'm drinking Grand Old Grand Par. Grand Old Par. You guys, you guys don't get that over okay. there. And it's a scotch. It's a, it's a blended oh, okay. scotch. Yeah. So it tastes tastes just like the Johnny Walker, twelve year old. Exactly. Very similar. I, I find that interesting that sometimes. Um, like especially say for Antonio and myself, that sometimes we'll get things that you guys won't, even though it's uh, even though like it's made in Scotland or the the UK. It's uh, like, I've got a bottle here of the Spey River uh, single malt, and I remember like some people saying that you guys don't even get that over there. Every distillery kind of does it, don't don't they? They do uh, uh, travel editions. Um, Who, which you, you uh, would find else. sorry Mark said yesterday that um, Jim Beam do a 12 year old but you can only get it at the uh, distillery and in oh, Japan oh maybe huh. <laughs> well, okay yeah, yeah like, something like, to look out for maybe. I mean they, like, everybody every distillery does it for some reason yeah yeah, I think that uh, if I remember correctly, this is a uh, Diageo product. So, and it was sold in the UK, and then all of a sudden disappeared, and it just uh, Latin America, you know, like Mexico, and uh, you know, even south, more south of Mexico, and the US are the only pretty much. I think Canada too are the only places you can oh. find this. Grand old pa. What yeah. what's it taste like? Just like Johnny Walker Black. Yeah, Johnny Walker Black. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But the the US is doing some actual whiskies now, isn't it? I, I I'm sure I saw something online. Um, I saw a distillery, which spelt it without the e, cool. which made it sound like they were doing something more like Scotch. Um, make make as much as. What was that? They, I was just saying maybe it's just them. Uh, Paying tribute to their Scottish roots, hmm. pretty much, you know. Yeah, I think they've been trying. Well, they, yeah, a lot of American distillers have tried to do, yeah, whiskey without any. Definitely some. Yeah. Oh, yeah Tennessee dude. whiskey. Yeah, spelled without the. Yeah. What's that like? Mm. I mean, I, a lot. I really do want to like try loads and loads of bourbons because obviously I see them a lot online. Because you guys over there are doing so many videos on them, and there's so many different types. And yeah, Dickel, Dickel's yeah. one of those ones that pops up a lot, isn't it? 
Yeah, you guys get this one over there for sure. We probably do, right? but it's, it's probably quite expensive. Okay, this one this one costs twenty dollars here, so I don't know for you guys to be That's maybe cheap. twenty dollars. What was that? I recently, so you guys would know that I recently bought a bottle of the the Dickel Eight, um, and that was about forty something dollars in say here, and say for us that's quite cheap. So that was that oh. was pretty good. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the the thirty-five to forty dollar mark is considered budget here. <laughs> but that's still affordable in in Australia, right? It's not like. Yeah, you have to have a great job to be spending thirty dollars a week I mean, on a bus. That's, that, that's about the same price as what we'd pay for about, uh, say, like Johnny Walker Red or Black Label. Oh, okay, all right. I Google it. You Google an exchange rate. So I think forty Australian dollars is like a about oh, a pound fifty or something. So how does the how does the Dickel eight compare to the twelve, Antonio? What was that? So how does the eight compare for the compare to the twelve? I haven't tried the eight, but I mean, the the eight. What is it? Forty percent ABV. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably it's probably just you know lighter on 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 the taste. So that yeah, it is. Um, it it is, is very good to compare. That that Dickel number twelve. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is sixty pounds on Master of Malt. Wow! How is that? Is that good price or bad price? No, that's that's, that's a, quite expensive. What, sixty, rate, what, 60 what, pounds. About one point two dollars to the pound. So that's like seventy seventy five dollars. So here's here's my thing. If you watch a review on a on a, an American whiskey, and you Google it like you did right now, and if it's sounds too expensive for you, don't buy oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's man, that's ridiculous. I mean, I know, um, say, um, over here, um, that we've got this. I don't know if you ever went to the, this shop at all when you were here, um, Chris. Um, there's one of our main liquor stores called Dan Murphy's, and they've got the the Dickel Twelve for fifty eight dollars. Okay, that's a bit, now, a bit better. And that's um, that's quite cheap. I mean, if you're going to be paying, was it seventy pounds? You said sixty pounds. Before, 60 before pounds, yeah, that's yeah. going to be about a hundred Australian dollars. That's yeah. ridiculous. But I mean, you know, Trump says we're going to get a good deal uh, once Brexit kicks in. So I mean, yeah. maybe bourbon prices will go down. Everyone, I mean, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That, that that works out will be $107 Australian. Yeah. Oh, that's the whole reason our master of Malt won't, won't ship to the US, as far as I know. Now, this has changed recently. Well, I mean, it's actually really difficult to uh, ship alcohol. I did a I did a giveaway on Instagram, and I found that um, shipping within the UK is fine. You can you can put alcohol in, but as soon as it's uh, to go abroad. Uh, you, obviously, the the Royal Mail just ask you what's what's in it, and as soon as you say it's alcohol, they said no, we, well, we can't send it. So it's you, you then have to go to uh, uh, another courier, which is always more expensive. So, yeah, yeah, same same thing here. It's like you gotta disclose what's in there. Uh, I just said it was uh, even even in the U.S. Um, you can tell them. Yeah, <laughs> but. You know, if they find out, that's that that's an uh, you know a fine. Well, I was just I was only sending it to France as well, so like essentially it could have gone via road if it was that bad. But um, you know, the, the I I ended up just sending it Royal Mail, but I, I just sent it. it was it was it was dye. He asked me what was in it, and I said it was wood dye, and he took it, and it got there, and all good. Yeah. No planes you were exploded. Be Alan and uh, tell me snow globes. It's a snow globe. <laughs> Snow globes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, globes. yeah. Or a good one's um, balsamic vinegar samples. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think uh, certain, certain I think Matthias says um, vegan oil. <laughs> what was that? I say I think uh, Matthias puts it down as um, beard oil from um, yeah, yeah, Classmate. Be beard oil. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shipping water bottles. Samples. Because you can't get water bottles anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like you're, you're doing a taste comparison. I'll say, like, um, UK, US, and Australian water bottles. Here you go, yeah. try it all. Natural spring water. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to have something that's believable. <laughs> Apparently, like, like when Alan talks about it, he got the amount of snow globes that he sent out from the one post office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the biggest dealer yeah. in snow globes in the globe, US. The snow globe business must be massive. It's, like, uh, it's booming, it's booming. Me. I'm doing really well. <laughs> it's urine samples, uh, Paul Gibbs says. <laughs> urine samples, I like it, yeah. I was just saying, Antonio, how do you reckon it would go down if um, if all these packages from um, Alan were arriving in Florida under the name of Snow Globe? Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that would make sense because they don't I really think... see snow, do they, in Florida? So it'd be like, oh, yeah. Oh, he's memory. talking about the other guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> snow Globe. <laughs> think Scarface. <laughs> yeah. They think I run a snow globe business. Yeah. <laughs> Alan's saying. Yeah. <laughs> I think Alan is yelling on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know where to look. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's honestly the best way to, to taste different things. Like, for instance, like you said, this is pretty expensive over there. You know, it'd be nice to share things like that. And Yeah, it's just a shame that it's quite awkward you know? yeah. yeah yeah maybe maybe we could invent some kind of uh whiskey swapping website where people from different places can say i'm willing to swap this for something else you know and you just send each other whiskeys mm -hmm. that'd be cool uh Ebhead's getting anxious because uh he wants the giveaway um all right. Yeah. So we'll this is um, this is just like aquavit. It comes to the quiz and everybody cut leaves. The quiz, <laughs> cut to the uh, yeah quiz. Yeah, it's not a C. Uh, cool. So um, Neil is going to give away it, a um. It seems like sorry? fate. It seems like fate. Cause we, we, it seems like fate. We've got thirteen people in the chat. And I'm going to give away a sample of the Glen Cadam 13. Well, to be honest, I've written so, down all the names that have been in the chat, and it's way more than 13. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. So uh, that, that's what I've done. I mean, hopefully, um, yeah. I mean, if you're not in the chat, but you are watching, then please uh, just drop a little comment of hi, or what's up, or how you doing, or I love Marmite. Um but yeah, basically, uh, Neil's going to give a sample away of that Glen Cadam 13, which will be nice. Uh, it's not a quiz quiz, uh, and in fact, it's not a quiz at all. We're just going to pick a number. <laughs> just, just, yeah. just, just, just to yeah, say thanks for being in the chat. For being and, on uh, and We're not talking about Vegemite line, either. So. Um, so I'll give you a couple of minutes, uh, well, I'll give you a minute just to, uh, or a few seconds to get into the chat and... Um, <laughs> Put your name down if you want to be entered, of course. It'd be great if I could uh, impart the, uh, or if you guys could smell this as well, because it really is. It's one of these ones that you would sit and smell for a while. It's uh, It's got a real complex kind of nose on it. I'm getting um, all sorts of stuff, like I said before, banana, pineapple, but green apples. It's a real fresh kind of summery kind of malt that you could definitely enjoy in the sun, barbecues. I, I, actually, I did that video about um, is whiskey a winter drink, and I was wondering um, what everybody kind of thought about that in terms of because obviously I guess Australia is fairly hot for the most part. Um, do you find that that the that maybe whiskey isn't as popular there because of that, or is it does it not matter? Or to be honest, um, I'm not too sure. Um, a lot of Again, probably one of the other reasons why I started doing the whole YouTube thing like other people is because you don't really have many other like whiskey drinkers around you. So you kind of um, branch out to the online community. So for me, I haven't really noticed that all that much myself. I mean, I still enjoy drinking 
um, whiskey in the in the summertime. So the only difference is you might just change the way you drink it, whether you want it with ice or uh, in a cocktail or something like that. But I mean, when you're you're living in a country that gives you forty degree heat in the summertime, I mean, you get used to it. So um, if you want to drink your whiskey in the summertime, well, you're going to drink it in the summertime. Yeah, just go inside, turn on your air conditioner, and drink your whiskey. Is that option as well. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, some of it for me as well, though, was a a, a flavor kind of profile because obviously in the summer you associate summer with berries, fruits, all the you know the fruits of the land kind of thing. So then. Um, you know, if if you can get those on a on a whiskey, then it kind of feels like a more summery malt. Where for me, like the say the Isla malts feel a bit more kind of heavy and oily, and uh, obviously with the smoke, the fire, winter, you're keeping warm. Perhaps there's like they're a little bit rougher, so they kind of feel more like winter malts to me. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I can agree with that. I just drink it no matter what time of the season it is. Yeah, me too. It was just it was it was actually because I I'd, I'd sent out the uh, um, this uh, one of the samples for uh, on from Instagram, <laughs> and the the guy was only in France, but I think he was in uh, south south of France. But he was saying that oh, it's too hot, it's too hot to drink whiskey because I was like, have you have you had it yet? What do you think, kind of thing. And uh, yeah, he's still not got got back to me, so I guess it's uh, still really hot in the south of France, and he's he's uh, not a, not a whiskey drinker in the sun. No, yeah. I would say that if, um, every season is Isla season. Yeah. Cheers. Well, to that. Eric, uh, <laughs> Eric Waite done a um, video about sure. ice, didn't he? Just yesterday, today, today. That was quite interesting. Where he's oh yeah you know, going yeah. through the you know different regions and different styles and EBVs and where, how much the ice affected um, affected the whiskey and I think he like included that high ABV um, bourbon on ice was a great little summer drink <laughs> as far as what I can get only only because I know who he is right because I'm subscribed to him but if I wasn't then I see his thumbnail and then you click on it, and you're like, "Whoa, who's who's this bald yeah, guy?" Yeah. That thumbnail. Was it? If that was <laughs> that's a picture of somebody famous as well, isn't it? I think. <laughs> Can't remember. Cool. Should we uh, do the draw? Oh, well, well, if you're not in it, you're now out. <laughs> uh, I shall get my lovely assistant to numberize randomly the uh, list of names. If she would be so kind. Thank you very much, love. lovely, lovely, lovely wife. She is brilliant. One. Yeah. Buy her a nice patient. pair of shoes now. Very supporting. Of nice of purse tomorrow. Yeah. Does she like whiskey as well? Uh, yeah, some she does. Yeah, and she likes um some of the these sweeter, salty stuff. Um, a sort of uh, sort of this. Like, yeah, pumpkins, um, and just rock oyster, it's quite nice. Um, yeah, I, I make her try everything. So. <laughs> make sure. Like some she doesn't, but um, try it. Go get down the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, so what do we got? What's the highest number here? Oh, okay. So, 14. You went up far off, actually. <laughs> uh, Epez, will, will she join us in London? She will not, I'm afraid. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so, who would like to do a number? Antonio? Number between 1 and 14, all-inclusive. 7. Lucky, Lucky number, seven. number 7 is Mark Slinger. Alright. Well done, Mark. Done, Mark. I don't know if he's still in, but uh, yeah. Well done, Mark. And he's in Scotland, so yeah. that's a nice little easy postage for you as well. Oh, that's all right. I'll just drop it off. Yeah. I'll just like, walk down the road and give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Mark. I remember, that, uh, Mark. I remember watching um, Aquavite's live streams a little while ago where he did a giveaway, 
And I think one of the, the guy that won the sample from him was like only lived about a few houses up from him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he's in Edinburgh, isn't he? So Yeah. No way, fantastic. <laughs> well done, Mark. Oh yeah, there you go. All right. See ya. Good to see we're still here. I couldn't see your comments earlier. <laughs> ah, cool, cool. Well, that was nice. Yeah, so let's conclude with the regions, shall we? I mean, they're they're all a bit. They're all a bit whatever they are. I was like, were there other questions that you had come up with at all in like regards to the regions or was that pretty yeah, much pretty it? Pretty much it really. I mean it was quite a loose topic really. Most of the last minute one. Yeah. Apologies. It's quite a good idea though. It's, I, I quite like that as a, a, a possible whiskey yeah. kind of uh, talk video of my own discussing the regions, why they were why they were made, what's the point in them, people's opinions yeah, of the them. history behind the regions is not a bad <laughs> shout, is it? Yeah. Also, uh, maybe before um, before we finish or wherever this goes for, um, goes to, um, say from whatever the the region is that you guys favour, what is your favourite whiskey from your favourite region? Let's start with Chris. <laughs> He's been asking all the questions, so be on the swap. Wife's laughing at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! Quick fire! Quick fire! Quick fire. What? So, what? My favorite whiskey from each region? No. What? What? From your favorite region? What is your favorite whiskey? Uh, Campbelltown Kilcurran Twelve is my favorite whiskey. Yeah, that that so hit the spot. I mean, it wasn't overly peated. Nice, subtle peat. Wheat. Just, just a great. Proper great. Oh, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a really good whiskey. I mean, I'm starting to think of the whiskeys I've tried, but um, that as a bottle, price wise as well, like sub forty pound as well, um, and one of those bottles that it, I will probably just keep on buying until it, yeah, until it's discontinued. One, of, one of them, I think. Yeah. There. What about you? I think. Um... If I was if I was to go through every region, I could probably pick I could maybe pick a favourite out of all of them. I think obviously I've already talked about it. Glendronach for Speyside. Um Highland, maybe uh Bal Blair, but this uh Glen Cadham is actually creeping up there, it's really nice. Uh Campbelltown, I think Aaron for me is like a proper standout malt. Everything that I've tried from there so far has been amazing. And Lowlands, maybe strangely Ochentoshin because it's got a kind of different kind of flavour profile. It's very uh, kind of funky. More Irish. It's it's very sort of sour, funky wood, which I find quite interesting. But also Edradour as well um, is a is a good one for me. And Antonio. Yeah, he he picked all the regions. <laughs> yeah, he did pick all the regions. <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't just pick one. <laughs> For me, it's um, my all-time favorite. Is always going to be the uh, our Big Ten. It's you know mm -hmm. affordable. It's always on the shelf, and you know I love that stuff. So that's that's going to be my my all-time favorite. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite Islas as well. Actually, I, the first time I tried it, we we uh, the. Standout whiskeys for me is when I tell myself a story or we tell each other a story. So when you're tasting it with somebody and uh, they, they start saying, oh, are you getting this? And you're getting it. With the Ardbeg 10, we went down this route of, um, like we could see a, a fisherman coming in. He was tying up his ropes, you know, so he, was, he, he had like a sort, sort of fishy hands. And you could, 
we could get that kind of uh, smoky mackerel smell with the rope kind of earthiness, the yeah. sea spray, and then we went. It, it even it went on further that he got home and he went into his greenhouse because we could smell the tom- a sort of tomatoiness, the you know the sort of leaves, the kind of that greenhouse kind of smell. So we told ourselves this like massive story about it, and that for me is like the epitome of a great whiskey is when you can just lose yourself in a moment yeah. with somebody else and have this kind of shared experience and tell a story. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, for me, the art bag gives me uh, like a humid, earthy kind of note. Yeah. You know, and that reminded me of my grandmother and, and you know, rest in peace back in Mexico when she would sprinkle water over her yard that was just dirt so she could, you know, sweep. And that that you know that reminded me. So that I think that's pretty much why our bag time is, is always going to be. Yeah. Like, so so it's all stories. Like, and yeah. the, the better the story, the better the whiskey. Right? right. Yeah. You make that special connection with it. Yeah. That's that true. Mm. Oh, and uh, rock oyster, which is a mix of several different ones. I always get that. Yeah. So that's got Jura, Orkney, and. Highlight and the other one, which I always forget, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a blend of uh, blend of all of them. Cool. Well, the good news, guys, is that my hangover is completely gone after <laughs> yeah. drinking. Like just <laughs> only that that amount of Glen Caddam, my my hangover is gone. It's great. Well, I think we're going to start wrapping it up, but. <laughs> Before we all go, as it seems to be quite a tradition now on these streams, uh, anybody got any cooking tips for their like signature dishes that they do? <laughs> Wait, when did this what involving? Well, I, I've said about put a teaspoon of marmite in your cottage or shepherd's pie mix. Um, Toby was yesterday about crisps on top of lasagna um, or chips, yeah. as Antonio would know as. Uh, sort of just like Lay's or something like that. Uh, crumpled up. I can give cheese. you a whiskey one. I mean, yeah. Anything that you'd think is like so a we... pro cooking tip? Well, I can give you a whiskey related one. So when you do your Christmas cake and you've got all that nice fruit cake, you know how normally you, you kind of you brandy. pour a few tablespoons every kind of uh, week of brandy or something. You use a really nice whiskey, especially something that's kind of sherry finished, like uh, a Glendronach or something like that. It just makes the best Christmas cake. That's good use for Glendronach 18, that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Next time you guys make uh, hamburgers, marinate your meat with some Artbeg 10. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it gives it a really nice, nice nice okay. flavor yeah that that sounds yeah, yeah. or I, I guess any sort of smoky whiskey so, yeah yeah does, does it give like a smoky taste to the to the meat at all it's really, it's really good you got to give it a try let me know what you think yeah i've got i've got a little sample bottle i think i might Down try that yep yeah. Yeah. that's that yeah. that's all you need is about a of top whiskey tip and... there everyone um they're all saying what they're whiskey and haggis obviously could be like a new YouTube channel right now. We all contribute to it. It's like cooking with yeah, whiskey yeah. kind of thing. You know? yeah. <laughs> whiskey. Yeah. yeah, and um, I was going to say, um, for me, um, for breakfast, you can't go wrong with the good old Vegemite on toast. <laughs> but I think he was going to say whiskey. Add, add to that scrambled eggs, cheese, and avocado. And whiskey. And whiskey. <laughs> Glenn Levitt 12. <laughs> but... That whiskey has to be Ardbeg for breakfast. There you go. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Breakfast of champ. Definitely. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> neutral bread can go get stuffed. It's Ardbeg all the way. <laughs> You've got no, like, pizza <laughs> yeah. tips. Yeah. Pizza tips? Anything like, you know, the... I haven't, I haven't tried pouring. Um, so I haven't tried pouring a glass of whiskey over a pizza yet. But uh, you didn't want to put tuna on a pizza, did you? But... You might start doing things in Australia, Andrew. 
Give it a try. <laughs> you put it in. I'll see how. I'll see how you put it in the dough. Could you? Whiskey. What the whiskey? I get the. Uh, well, of course you can. I mean, would yeah, instead the of the water, yeah. kill the yeast though, wouldn't it? Or, yeah. I don't know. Well, yeast. I think yeast also goes into uh, making alcohol as well. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm not. <laughs> Here we go. Well, obviously, yeah. cooking cook it in pizza. the oven that's going to kill off all the alcohol, but. Um. Yeah, but what's Rolf saying? Cook sheep meat and cabbage with it. Oh, okay. Sounds great. Sheep meat. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's, yeah, that's it. The haggis, isn't it? Is that what people asked? Have, have I missed where that came in? Probably have. I think um, Greg's just come up with a good one. He's saying, I'll say... Um, smoked with Isla whiskey sausages and then put them on a pizza. I think that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That does. Sound or whiskey. Great. That's, there's your new. So could you put uh, whiskey in your haggis with pineapple? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Got well, pineapple. Maybe, right? maybe Otherwise, it's just mix it with the art bag. Maybe it'll change it. <laughs> pineapple art bag. All, all of a sudden, I'm just hearing the Star Wars Imperial March music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thank you everyone for coming on. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed the chat today. Uh, it's been a long old day. I've had a weird barbecue this afternoon with. Um, family and stuff so yeah it was it's been nice to come back chat, chat about some whiskey regions yeah. of scotland yeah. it's been really good uh antonio thank you very much for coming on uh real pleasure um neil again absolute pleasure and andrew again another pleasure um thank you everybody in the chat for coming in um appreciate it mark slinger um i think i have all your details already. possibly if I don't, uh, I'll give you a buzz uh, and I'll, we can get him over to, to Neil uh, and he'll be able to send you that lovely sample of Glen Cadam 13. Uh, so yeah, brilliant. Uh, please everybody go and subscribe to these guys' channels. Um, Whiskey Trials is great. Um, Antonio is doing some great stuff in Whiskey Quests and Andrew's Gonna start doing more Steve Irwin impressions on his channel. Yeah, yeah, mate. Uh, here we have little stuff, something. Uh, yeah. Got some whiskey yeah. review. Oh, yeah. yeah, mate. Uh, bonza. Yeah, yeah mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, please everybody go and subscribe. Please hit that thumbs up. Hit that like. Uh, all this sort of thing. Epheads can't join tomorrow. That's gutting Epped because you might miss out on the super draw. All the wonderful things that are going to get prized. Um, Another thing. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll enter you anyway. If you've been so supportive. <laughs> uh, but yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, that should be on the screen, everyone. Point out that screen. That's the last drop. <laughs>